Josh here with Lee Andrews, host of the Banged Up Podcast, which you can get over at theidpshow.com. As the 2022 fantasy season winds down and we look ahead to 2023, we don't want to forget injured stud players who, even if they didn't contribute to our rosters this season, as we head into the offseason, we might want to make moves to acquire these players. Or maybe not. Lee is going to talk through a trio of studs, starting with two edge rushers, one of whom didn't play at all this season, and the other of whom was playing very well before he got hurt and went out for the year. Lee, who are the first two players we want to talk about? So the first guy we'll get into is Harold Landry, Titans Pro Bowl linebacker. He tore his ACL before the start of the season, late August, at practice. So ACL functionality. The anterior cruciate ligament in your knee connects your femur to your tibia diagonally. This helps with cutting and multidirectional movements, overall stability of the knee. Specifically, it makes it so that your tibia, which is your shin bone, so it doesn't slide too far in front of or anterior to your femur, which is your thigh bone. How does your ACL tear? It can mainly happen a couple different ways. Number one, you can make a cut. The load is too much for the ligament to handle, and it tears. The other way is you can get hit in the side of the knee. It's a contact injury. These injuries can also compound on top of each other, like adding a meniscus tear or an MCL sprain to the mix. This, of course, adds more possible complications, longer healing time, stuff like that. Good news for Harold Landry is he just straight up had an ACL tear, so there's nothing else he has to worry about, no other pathologies to that. How do you fix an ACL tear? Surgery. Your ACL can't heal on its own. This is mainly due to a lack of blood flow and enzymes in your synovial fluid that wipe away any blood clot that tries to form to kick off that healing process to begin with and thus surgery is required. Recovery time for that surgery on average is nine to 12 months and depends on what other pathologies or injuries you may have or that may have occurred during your initial injury. Somebody who had a torn ACL compounded with something like a patellar tendon disruption, a la Chase Young, is gonna be on the longer end of the spectrum when it comes to recovery time because there is more to deal with. Somebody like Harold Landry, who reportedly only tore his ACL, we can expect to return earlier on the spectrum barring any setbacks. Depending on how his rehab goes, which most clubs have down to an exact science at this point, we can expect him to be at or close to the level of play prior to injury around the beginning of June or July and back to his normal level of play by the time the season starts. Of course, these are just statistics and recommendations. Everybody is different and everybody does heal differently. The other young star that tore his ACL is Rashawn Gary. Now that we know all about an ACL injury, let's talk about him. He suffered a non-contact ACL injury while chasing a play action during the first snap of the third quarter in the week nine loss to the Lions. He closed down the edge to go after the RB and takes a hard step to the right with a change of direction. Think of it as your whole body weight going to your right. You tell your knee, yo, wait up, we got to go left. It goes left. That change in direction from your whole body weight moving doesn't happen as quickly as your knee wants it to. And if you take a piece of floss, you pull tension on it, what's it going to do? It's going to snap. That's what happened with Rashawn Gary here. And honestly, it doesn't take much at all under the right circumstances for this to occur. Fortunately for Rashawn Gary, his method of injury only resulted in a clean ACL tear, leaving him with the best possible situation for recovery. Realistically, I like to set an expectation that players who suffer a clean ACL tear will return in about 10 months. That would put Rashawn Gary's return likely around September with a chance to return sooner than that, depending on how recovery and rehab do go. He'll be close to ready at the beginning of the year. And if he's not 100%, it's likely the Packers won't put him out there as it'll be an early in the year and there's a higher risk of re-injury. We can't expect Gary to play the vast majority of the 2023 season. However, do be aware there's a chance he misses the first couple of weeks. There we go, two premier edge rushers and what we can roughly expect from these guys in 2023. Next up here, Lee, we want to talk about a Colts linebacker whose future is uncertain outside of his nebulous injury situation. Who is the next guy on your list that we want to talk about? So the next guy that we're going to talk about is Colts three-time All-Pro linebacker Shaq Leonard, who had an injury-ridden 2022 season. His first initial back surgery was in June of 2022 to address nerve pain, which caused him to miss the first three games, returned to a lackluster week four where he suffered a concussion and a broken nose, subsequently leading to his absence in weeks five through seven, returned in week nine, but again was not able to regain his dominant form due to a lack of power stemming from those back and nerve issues. This led to a second back surgery taking place November 15th last month, and to be as blunt as possible, nerve injuries suck. 
They're incredibly painful, debilitating to the point where it's draining just to even walk, let alone play in an NFL game. I couldn't find anything that would specifically tell me what type of surgery Leonard had in November, but after doing some research, I'm going to speculate it was caused by a disc in his back putting pressure on or pinching nerves in his back which could cause that shooting nerve pain down his foot and leg. This type of injury usually results in lumbar decompression surgery or spinal decompression surgery. So what happens during this type of surgery? Luckily, it's a minimally invasive surgery that's carried out after all other options have been exhausted. There are three different types of decompression surgery. There's a laminectomy, which is where a section of bone is removed to relieve pressure on an affected nerve. There's a discectomy, a section of a damaged disc is removed to relieve pressure, or a spinal fusion, which is where two or more vertebrae are fused or joined together to stabilize and strengthen the spine. Sometimes it can be a combination of treatments in one surgery. I don't think Leonard went through a spinal fusion, leaving the other options on the table. Shaq is on the road to recovery and has roughly 10 to 11 months to completely recover until the start of the 2023 season. After reports of a successful surgery were sent out, Leonard is hopeful to recover and return to the team by OTAs, which usually takes place in late May or early June, putting him at six months removed from surgery. I think this is something that can be attainable. Let's take a look at two examples in the NFL from previous years, and this is found via Spine Physicians Institute that closely resemble Shaq Leonard's situation. First, Tony Romo had surgery in December of 2013 to address a herniated disc. He then participated in light off-season workouts and played in the preseason games. I think this is closest to what we can expect for Shaq Leonard going forward. Another good example is Arian Foster, who had a microdiscectomy in November of 2013. He was then cleared to play in March of 2014, which was a total of four months recovery, which led to his third best year of fantasy, where he actually averaged close to 19 points per game. So what does the future hold for Shaq Leonard, Rashawn Gary, and Harold Landry? We shall see, but Lee, thank you for filling us in, giving us the updated medical breakdown of what we can expect from what we know right now. And we talked a lot about ACL injuries, and Lee, this is something that you are very familiar with. Can you fill us in a little bit on what you've been doing with your day job as it relates to these ACL injuries and what might be coming down the road for sports medicine? when it comes to healing these devastating injuries. Thanks for having me on, Josh. It's a pleasure to be here. I specialize in ACL tears. I actually work in operating rooms alongside many orthopedic surgeons who do these ACL surgeries. So I do something that's a little bit different than the standard of care ACL surgery that happens. I work for a company called Miyak Orthopedics. We manufacture what's called the BEAR implant that stands for Bridge Enhanced ACL Restoration. In a nutshell, essentially what we do is we take something that looks like a jumbo marshmallow or a packing peanut. We go in and we sew that implant into the torn ends of your ACL. We implant your own blood into it. That's whole blood. We close everything up, put the knee in full extension. And over six to eight weeks, what happens is that implant dissolves. And what's left over is your actual native ACL tissue. The great thing about this is that it offers the same outcomes, if not better in some situations, than the standard of care so being able to be a part of something that can eventually change the way ACL treatments are done is something very fun to be a part of. Amazing stuff there, Lee. Thanks again for doing this. And thank you all for watching these IDP shorts throughout the season. We'll be moving to a bi-weekly format in the off season. So a couple times a month, we'll be having these videos with our friends from across the IDP world. But from all of us here at the IDP show, thank you for tuning in. Happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2023.